All right, let's talk about editor utility widgets and editor utility blueprints. We'll start with the blueprints. I'm going to right click over here in my content browser, go to editor utilities and select editor utility blueprint. I'm going to be presented with this menu here. If you don't see this all classes, you can just click this little arrow there and it'll show it to you. So what I want to type in here is, is the word action. This is going to give me two options. There's going to be actor action utility and asset action utility. You'll notice asset action utility is up here. I'm not sure why actor action utility isn't, but this is how it is. So I'm going to go ahead and select actor action utility to begin. And I'm going to name it EUW for editor utility widget. In fact, this is probably a blueprint, so we'd probably just make that be a little OCD about it. Editor utility blueprint actor. I'm going to open it up by double clicking it. We're going to go down to functions. We're going to add a function and call this one uh, print selection. I'm actually going to be a little more explicit as print selected actors and compile it and save it. I'm going to pull off from my execution pin here and type in get selected actors. This is going to return an array of my selection. An array is just a list. We can iterate over that list with a for each node. There's a for each loop here. I'm going to pull off from the loop body and type in, type uh, print. And what I want to print is the name of my array element. So whatever my selected actor is, we'll just go ahead and print the name of it. We'll hit compile and save. So now I will select an actor. Go find my output panel. Right click to clear that. So you can either right click on the actor itself, I believe, and go to script, scripted actor actions, and you see we'll get our print there, or you can come over to the outliner and do the same thing, scripted actor actions and print selection. You can select a few things. Right click on one, and go to scripted actor actions, and Voila, right? Okay, cool. So that's obviously a pretty simple operation, but anything you can do to an actor, you can do procedurally. So if you have a bunch of things and you wanna, whatever, do things to them, you can you can uh, accomplish that fairly simply using this editor utility blueprint, actor action utility. All right, let's look at the next version of this, which is gonna be basically the same thing. Back to editor utilities, select editor utility blueprint, and this one, I'm going to make it asset action utility. So the difference between an actor and an asset is these are assets in the content browser, and these are actors here in the world. Actors are typically instances of assets. Go ahead and make a new editor utility blueprint. Open it up. We're going to do pretty much the exact same thing. Go to functions. We'll make it print selected assets, pull off, type in get selected assets. Once again, we get that array, which we can iterate over with a for each loop. And we're gonna just print the name of everything that's in the array. Compile and save. And also this function is by default exposed here in the editor. Now I'm gonna select some assets, right click, scripted asset actions. Actually, let me clear this real quick. And then print selected assets. And you can see there are the names of all the things that we have printed. So those are the two main categories of asset action utility and actor action utility. You can see the parent class up here. And the, these are useful for lots of things. It's also worth noting that one of the nice things about the editor utility widgets is they have functionality that a regular blueprint does not necessarily have. They can also do a lot of the same stuff a regular blueprints can do. The difference is context. There's no expectation that an editor utility widget or blueprint is going to be used during runtime. So they're not worried about making sure that all of the functions that are available are optimized in terms of 60 frames a second, right? So it doesn't matter if something takes 10th of a second or, or five seconds, right? You're not doing it during gameplay. It's it's all in the context of, a, of an editor tool. So one of the downsides of, of these options here, this editor utility blueprint is it doesn't have a UI and that's not as useful as it could be 
So that's one of the benefits of the Editor Utility widget. It has a UI. So I'm going to right click over here. We'll go to Editor Utilities and now I'm going to select Editor Utility widget. It will provide us with two options here, the stack box and the grid panel. And these are new as of 5.3 and I don't actually know how to use them. So I'm just going to grab the first one and we're going to rename this new asset Editor Utility Widget Demo, for lack of a better name. So right now, if you come down on this side, this is going to be our hierarchy. This is kind of an important panel. You can see we've got this thing here called a stack box. That was the option that we picked. The other one is, I think it's got it down here, but there's like another one, grid panel. So the options by default are stack box and grid panel. And uh, there's, they're probably awesome, but like I said a minute ago, I'm not really sure exactly how to use them. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to grab canvas panel and drop it in. Look, compile and save. Canvas panel is very simple. So quickly, we've got some common UI elements, a button, a checkbox, a slider, text. And then there are some other things down here that are that are also kind of useful that you might have to dig around for a little bit more. But for now, we're just going to create a button. And the way that we're going to do that is by clicking and dragging. And we're going to drop it right there in the middle. And you can see it's got this like fancy flower thing. That means its position is relative to the upper left hand corner, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with it selected, come over to the anchors drop down and select this one right in the middle. And so what that's going to do is it's going to make this button's position relative to the center of the UI, which is useful uh, because if you have the UI docked somewhere, the center is going to be what you're always going to see. You're not necessarily always going to see the corners of it. So, okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's you know, close enough is close enough. So I want to give this thing a label. I'm going to grab text and I'm going to drag it over and it'll kind of snap here to the button. And you can see the text is now parented under our editor utility button. I'm going to make the button just a little bit bigger so it's big enough for our text block. Select the text block and we can type in font up here. And we can say, I'd like you to be 12. And I'm going to make this text. Initially, we'll just say, do something. All right, so we've got this button. I want to give this button a name so that I can refer to it on the function side, which we'll take a look at in a second. So right now there's this editor utility button zero. I'm just going to call this one BTN do something. All right, compile and save. So now I've got, so this is all in designer. This is a, a unique uh, window here for the editor utility widget. Now I'm going to click on graph. And what you will notice is in my variables, I now have this variable called btn do something. And the reason I have that as an option here is because this is variable is selected on that button, which it is by default. So we'll come over to graph. I'm going to drag this in. We'll say get button do something, pull off, and I will type in the word clicked. So we've got this bind event on clicked. And the way this works is we've got an event construct. So basically like when you hit compile, this is going to get run. So we're just going to go ahead and connect the event construct to our bind event on clicked. So when this thing gets compiled, what it's going to do is it's going to bind an event to when this button gets clicked. And obviously there's no event here yet. So we'll pull off from that. Type in custom event. And the thing that we are going to do is we'll just print hello for now. We'll hit compile and save. So there's this button up here called run utility widget. I'm going to go ahead and click that and you will see now we have our utility widget. I'm going to go ahead and open up the output panel. Sorry, output log. I keep calling it panel there. Clear the log, we'll push the button, and you can see we're doing something. So that is the very, very high level version of the difference between an editor utility blueprint that works on actors, an editor utility blueprint that works on assets, and an editor utility widget that has a UI. So the, the benefits of the widget 
are going to become apparent in time. The rest of the videos are going to be dealing with widgets and adding parameters and exposing those parameters, doing things with the, uh, the data that we can gather from those parameters. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. Stick around and I'll see you in the next one.